Good morning and welcome to the Power in the Word broadcast of the Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church, where Rev. Gerald Parker Sr. is our wonderful pastor. Our church motto is Let's Do It God's Way. Expect a blessing. Let's listen. And the scripture says, in St. Mark, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, <clears throat> He departed into a mountain to pray. All right. And when the evening was come, if you want to say evening, you can say night. It just depends on what translation. But, and when the evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. <clears throat> and he saw them toiling mm -hmm. in rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them, and about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Uh -huh. And when he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. But let's focus on verse 48, Pilgrim Progress and Visitors. And he saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. <clears throat> and about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea. That's enough right there. I've got some good news for you today. Jesus walks on troubled water. Yes, sir. That's good news. You may be seated. And notice I said Jesus, and that should, that should be enough to excite you right there. Maybe we can just go home on the name Jesus. Because on the name Jesus... If we believe it, souls can be saved right. by the name of Jesus. When I think about Jesus, I think about the cross. And when I think about the cross, I think about uh, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And when I think about the Lamb of God, I think about how that Jesus died on the cross in our place for your sins and mine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. And, and he is the Lamb of God. Yes, he is. I say he is the Lamb of God. Yes. And thank God for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. That blood represents he gave his life. And that same Jesus that died rose early Sunday morning. But the good news today is this. This is the good news. This is good news. Is that Jesus still walks on troubled waters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I need to explain something to you because there's a lot of symbolism there and, and sometimes we get so caught up in the symbolism. The troubled waters represents the storms of life. I know that's right. I, I, I can tell by the eight mans here that some of y'all can bear witness to that. And, and, and so somebody might be asking the question, well, pastor, 
if the disciples had, had a storm in chapter 4, all of a sudden we're going into chapter 6 and they're getting ready to go into another storm. Uh -huh. yes. There's a lesson in that. And the lesson that we can learn is, is that, yeah, this is a lesson now. Thank God for storms in our life. And, and I know as you look back over your life, you can think about that terrible storm and how that Jesus Christ spoke in your storm and said, peace be still. And the storm was eradicated. But you know, and I know that since you had that last storm, you've been in a few more storms. The point I'm trying to say is that Jesus said this so beautifully in St. John uh, 16, 33. He said, in this world, ye shall have tribulation. There is no way, Pilgrim Progress and Visitors, that we can escape the storms of life. Now, the difference between, yeah, this first storm in Mark, the fourth chapter, and this storm in Mark, the sixth chapter was, in Mark, the fourth chapter, watch this now, Jesus was on board. But in this particular storm that we're going to confront today, he's not on board. Yeah, yeah, somebody's a hold up. That ain't, Pastor, that, 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 you, he was on board with the first storm. But on this storm, he's not on board and they still have storms. Yes. I, and I need to fix something. I need to fix something right now. I need to fix something right now. When those disciples had those storms, they were experiencing storms in the midst of being obedient to the master. You see, I need to let you all know something here. When you are obedient to the master and you are conscientious of doing what the master says, just because you are obedient does not mean that you're not going to have any storms in your life. Jonah experienced a storm, but his storm was experienced because of disobedience. And then, but the disciples had storms because of obedience. There are two types of storms, and I, I thank God for storms. I thank God for storms. I thank God for storms. That's what you call, that's what you call corrective storms. Well, because of disobedience, and going against God's will, he causes storms in our life to correct us and shake us up and make us realize what we have done. That's what you call corrective storms. But then there are perfecting storms where he allows us to go through storms to perfect us and cause us to be, to be closer to him and to increase our faith. Yeah, that, that, there's corrective storms and then there's perfecting storms where when you come out of that storm, you are much better and much stronger because you've been in a storm. Yes, sir. And so today, we're going into another storm. It says, and straightway, look at verse 45, he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people. I want you to look at this. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is the context. The scripture says, when the, while the people were picking their teeth, everybody was full. It says, and straightway. Uh, that, that, that another word for straight words and immediately you you will find out as you read the gospel of saint mark you'll see this term immediately and straightway what mark does he moves us from one scene to another and from one scene to another and he'll say immediately he'll say straightway all through that book because he's trying to get us to see, to show us some things about the master but the scripture says here, and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship. Hold it now. It didn't say he asked the disciples. But it said he constrained them. And that word constrained, pick on progress and business, it means he forced them. Now the question is, why did he have to force them and to constrain them to go? Come a little closer. Let me tell you what happened. What happened was, 
after Jesus fed the 5,000, not including the women and the children, 20 some thousand people were fed miraculously by bread and, 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 and fish. John tells us in John 6, 15, that some of the people were so happy that Jesus had fed them with just a few fish and barley loaves. They decided right then on the spot, let's just make this man our king. That's what it said, John 6, 15. They says this, hey, he, he took just a few fish and bought a load and fed us like this. Let's just take him by force and make him king. And that way he can feed us from now on. Let me tell you something. Those people wanted to make him king not to be uh, his followers. They wanted to, to him to be their king so they could have fish and bread till the day they die. And what I found out, if they would have made him king and he would have fed them fish and bread, after about two months, they would have said, we need to change the menu. The crowd, the multitude wanted to make him king. That, that was dumb. They didn't understand that he was already king. Not only was he king, he was the king of kings, and he's still the king of kings. And so, and so what he did was, more than likely, the, the, the hysteria was about to take place, and the people were about to grab Jesus and make him their king. And I got a sneaky suspicion that those disciples got a whiff of that, and they were saying, you know what, this, this might be a pretty good deal, because we're already with him, so if they make him king, we can be his sidekicks, and we can be part of the kingdom. And so as Jesus did. He said, fellas, get out of here right now. Get in the ship and go. What he was doing that he was protecting them from the hysteria, hysteria of the crowd. He did not want them to get caught up in that cry in the crowd. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we have to learn to leave the crowd. And then he wanted also to get by himself so he could pray. Why did he go pray? I believe he prayed because he needed strength from the Father. He was flesh and also spirit. And the fleshly part possibly wanted to be a part of that king business. But the spiritual kept telling him that you have a mission that the Father have sent you on. And so, and, 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 and that temptation was almost a repeat of what he had gone through in Matthew 4 in the wilderness. And so he went to the mountain to be alone with the Father. Let me tell you something right now, my brothers and sisters. When you feel tempted, you should get alone with the Father and pray to the Father. But also this, uh, yeah, 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 in the midst of success, when you are, have, 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 have achieved success in your life, sometimes uh, it's good to pray before, and it's good to pray during, but when you have achieved some success, you better get along with God and pray because sometimes pride will seek in, and you need to say, Lord, I thank you that you brought me this far. I don't know how long the master was there in the mountain, but I do know this in verse 47. He says, and when the evening was come. Nighttime had come. And he had been in the mountain alone for some hours. And so the scripture says here, and when the evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. This is it, this is it. Jesus is still in the mountains, All right. praying to the Father, and while he was praying to the Father, Mark tells us that the ship and the boat that the subs were in were just halfway in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Work with me just for a minute. Wait a minute. That trip they, they shouldn't have taken but about four or five hours. 
Why would the ship still be in the middle of the sea after all those hours? I, I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. They came across some trouble. Uh -oh. all right. All right. While he was up there praying in the, in the mountain, the disciples had not made it to Bethsaida. They had not made it there. The journey had been thwarted. The journey had some contradictions. It had some distractions. And I'll tell you what happened. While he was in the mountain, the scripture says, uh, uh, he looked and he looked. And since he was sitting high and looking low, he looked and saw that the disciples were toiling in the midst of a storm. Contrary, contrary means uh, they were trying to go in one direction and the winds were blowing another direction and they, they had contrary winds and I've come to tell you my brothers and sisters as we live in this life when you try to obey the Lord you will come across some contrary winds in your life everybody said contrary winds Con it's all kind and, and, and what makes contrary winds so terrible is that the contrary winds muff up, they mess up the, the water and cause the water to trouble. The water never would have been troubled had it not been for the wind. But the wind came and troubled the water. And, and then since it troubled the water, they couldn't go forward, they couldn't go backward, and they were just simply at the mercy of the wind. Some of y'all here today are in the midst of a storm right now. And Satan tried to keep you away from here because uh, he knew that you'd come and hear this. And some of you are in the midst of a storm at this particular moment. But I've got good news for you. I, I, know, I know the wind is probably blowing and, and you're trying your best to control things and you're trying your best to direct your life. But I've come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, the good news is, is simply this. While the winds are blowing, Jesus walks on troubled waters. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. And the good news, and not, not, now here's the good news, Brother Jones and everybody here. This is the good news. While the disciples were supposedly alone in the boat in the midst of that storm, Jesus was not physically on the ship, but, but they were there still on his word. And the good news is that although he was not physically with them, he still saw their trouble. He saw them toiling. And another word for toiling is he saw them torture. He saw their situation. He saw their trouble. And the good news is, my brothers and sisters, although you may feel like that you're alone, but I've got good news for you. The master knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He sees you. He sees your situation. You, Although you feel alone, but you are not alone, he understands. He sits high and looks low, and he knows how much we can bear Hallelujah to that. He understands and he sees. Yes, sir. But Jesus just simply hesitated. He could have stopped the storm immediately, but he didn't do that. He allowed them to toil. He allowed them to struggle. And sometimes he allows us to struggle in order to strengthen us. He allows you to struggle to increase your faith. He allows you to struggle to realize that you're not as strong as you think you are. He, sometimes he allows us to struggle, but rest assured, he knows where we are. Hallelujah. I say he knows where we are. And about the fourth watch of the night, between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., uh -huh. in the wee hours of the night, he said, I need to go and see about my boys. I need to go see how they're doing. And so, since there were not any extra boats, since there were not any extra boats around, and Jesus is just Jesus, the scripture says he started walking upon the sea. Jesus, the master, started walking on water. He defied gravity and defied physics and walked on the water. Someone said, how could he walk on the water? i tell you why he walked on the water. Because he's the one that made water in the beginning. 
I'm trying to help somebody here. And he walked on the water. And, and what, what happened was, I heard one writer say that, that, that the molecules in the water could not help but to lift him up. They, they didn't want to let Jesus down. So the molecules just kept holding Jesus up because Jesus got to be lifted up because he's the master and he's the king. king. But hold it now. While he was walking on the water, the storm was still raging. While he was walking on the water, the waves were going up and down. But I can see him walking on the water, walking on the troubled water. Yes, Hallelujah. And I've come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, just look around because Jesus, yeah. Somebody said, why did he walk on the water? He, he, he walked on the troubled water to let us know that he was in control of their trouble. Some of y'all don't hear that day. I say, he, he, the very thing that troubled them was no trouble to the master. He was walking on the troubled water. And while he was walking, look at Jesus. While he was walking in the midst of that sea and the rain was falling and the thunder raging and the wind blowing and the, and, and the waves going up and down, there he was walking on the water. And I, I bet you his clothes didn't even get wet. And about that time, the scripture says, but when the disciples saw him, they saw the master walking on the water. Hold on, look at me, look at me. They saw a person walking on the water. They didn't know that that was Jesus walking on the water. Somebody said, why didn't they know that there was Jesus walking on the water? Because they were not expecting Jesus in the first place. And if they, if they had been expecting Jesus, they would have realized that this was Jesus walking on the water. And the scripture says, and they thought, they supposed that he was a spirit. They supposed that he was a death angel. They just simply supposed that. And guess what? They were already afraid. It was dark. The wind was blowing. The waves were flashing. And all of a sudden now, here they are, tired, worn out, have gone as far as they can go. And all of a sudden, here they see something walking on the water. They had never seen nobody walking on the water. It must be a spirit. It must be a death angel and guess what they did the scriptures and they cried out they screamed yeah, that's have you ever been in a situation where you just screamed didn't know what to do didn't know where to go didn't know what but you just simply screamed anybody ever have a scream moment where you just simply screamed yeah. Yeah. good news y'all Jesus hears the screams. They were not crying out to the figure because they didn't know what it was, but they simply cried out. And guess what happened, my brothers and sisters? In the midst of them crying out, the mouse had already walked on water. He was walking on troubled waters. He was, but then he did something that was beautiful. He spoke to them. In the midst of their screaming, in the midst of their frustration, he spoke to them. And guess what he said? Woo-wee! He said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. I know you're afraid right now. I know you didn't know who I was. But now let me tell you, it is I. The Greek word there is ego ami. It means I am. You, you're wondering who is this on this water? It's I am. All right. yes, sir. I am yes, sir. is here yes, sir. on the sea. Yes, sir. I am that I am. Come on. I'm the same I am yes, sir. that spoke to Moses in Exodus the third chapter. I am the same I am. That's Jehovah, the self-existent one. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am Jehovah Nissi. I am Jehovah Sitkanu. I am Jehovah Shalom. I am Jehovah Shama. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am Jehovah Rophe. Yes. And whatever you need in your storm, I am whatever you need. Yes, 
I've come to tell everybody here that Jesus is still uh, the great I am. He is uh, the, the resurrection and the life. He's the great I am. Jesus is uh, the good shepherd. He is the great I am. Uh, he is the bright and morning star. He is uh, the great I am. And I've come to tell you, in the midst of your storm, don't be afraid. Just listen for the voice of the master. And I can hear him say, don't worry about a thing. I am here. And the good news is, the scripture said, he got in the boat with them. Isn't it good to know that not only will he be by us, but he'll get in the ship with us. In the midst of our storm, he'll be with us. He's already promised, I'll never leave you nor forsake him. Can I get a witness? In the midst of your storm, he's always there. In the midst of your storm, he's always there. And I can hear him say, be not afraid. It is I. But the good news is, guess what happened? He didn't stop the storm. He didn't stop the storm. When he said, it is I, the storm was still raging. When he said, be not afraid, the storm was not raging. But when he got into the boat, guess what happened? As soon as he got into the boat, the wind stopped blowing. As soon as he got into the boat, they made it to Bethsaida. Do you know why? Because of the presence of Jesus Christ. And I've come to tell you, at the presence of Jesus Christ, Phil would have to leave. At the presence of Jesus Christ, storms will stop. At the presence of Jesus Christ, he will speak to your heart. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but if you're in the middle of your storm, just listen for the voice of the master. And I can hear him say, be not afraid, for I am here. He still walks on troubled waters. I said he still walks on troubled waters. Thank you for viewing the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministries, please visit us at or call our church office at 501-372-4429 where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Join us again on Wednesday and or Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Be blessed.